All right, I've been looking at classes, and I think I want to play wizard. What do they do? Well, you say some words and point and throw stuff, and then people have to stand there and count. That doesn't sound very fun for them. Oh, it's okay. Your spells don't always work on them. Uh, uh-huh. And what happens when I run out of spells? Then you get to stand there and count. Okay, I guess I'll try it out. Great. Here's your math worksheet. On second thought, I think I'll play warrior. Oh, they have spells too. Scout? Spells. Barbarian? Spells. Belgarth. <music> to put it mildly, Ampgard has a problem with spells. Counting isn't fun, math isn't fun, immunities aren't fun, and out-of-game states aren't fun. Take those things away, and what's left of Ampgard's magic system? Not much. But it's worth sifting around in the rubble to see what is fun about Ampgard's magic system and how we can make that shine. I've talked in my other videos about how to get rid of counting and immunities, so today I want to focus on getting rid of math and out-of-game states and dig into what I think a good casting system would look like. Now, V8 already has a class with lots of powerful abilities that all have built-in counterplay, where I can adjust the number of each ability I have available without needing to do math or write anything down. And the game keeps me from spamming these abilities without making me counter recharge. This class is Archer. The V8 Archer, for my money, is the best design class in all of Ampguard. So when I'm designing my magic system, I'm going to take as many cues from Archer as I can. We need a way to limit spells without making players do math. Archer does this by having a pool of specialty arrows, and that pool grows as you advance in level. To make this work for magic, we'll need every spell to have a physical component associated with it, not just spell balls and spell strips. These don't have to be spell by spell, we can have general components for each method of casting. So we'll have a component for verbals, a component for buffs, a component for touch or reusable verbals, and of course spell balls. So long as you have the component of the right type and it's not exhausted, you can cast the spell. So what are these components and how do they work? Well, spell balls and buffs are obvious. You have balls and you have strips, and whenever you use those components, they are physically taken away from you by the person you cast them at. The physical nature of the spell adds counterplay and stops it from being spammed. To recharge the spell, I just need to physically get the component back. It's perfect. But what about verbals? We need a physical component that can visually represent when you can use a verbal and when you can't. There's a lot of options here. V8 actually does this with buffs that give multiple use strips, like snaring vines. But messing around with strips can get kind of fiddly in a fight, and snaring vines isn't everybody's favorite spell, so this can change, but for now I'm going to recommend using wristbands. These can be like those cheap charity bracelets. You put them all on your casting arm, and then when you cast a verbal, one of them is exhausted, and you have to move it from your left arm to your right arm before you can cast another verbal. When you're out of bands, no more verbals. Then you can recharge them using spells like Steal Life Essence. Or you could recharge, say, one band every life. That way you always have access to your magic, but you're gonna have to slow down the verbals over time. Now what about spells that are meant to be reusable, like Steal Life Essence or Heal? Well, I mentioned this in another video, but I'm gonna bring back an old idea called Spellcasting Implements. In older editions, classes needed to hold a wand, which was basically a dagger that you couldn't fight with, in order to use ambulant or certain spells. This was dropped for good reason, because the functionality of these implements was pretty tacked on. I'm going to put them to better use. They're going to let us force our magic users to actually rely on their magic by taking away weapon proficiencies from our wizard, druid, and bard archetypes. I want to give each of these archetypes a spell at level 1 called Barrier that will let them block with their implement but not attack. This means that the magic user can only attack using spells like Magic Bolt, but they could get a blocking tool essentially for free. This could encourage magic users to use flavorful items that might not otherwise see use, like a staff. It also creates an opportunity cost for casting other spells with implements. If you cast another spell with your implement, you won't be able to block while you're casting it, making you more vulnerable. This type of cost gives inherent counterplay to spell casting and creates interesting opportunities for your opponents to exploit. Okay, so this system limits how many times you can cast in a game, but how do we limit the number of spells you have available? That can still bog you down. Well, 
to explain how I'm going to resolve this, I want to go on a bit of a tangent and say that Antguard really only needs less than half of its spells. I'm going to need to back that up. I've already explained in another video why I think immunities should go the way of the dodo, but I want to dispense with a lot more than that. Let's look at what's fun about using magic in a LARP. You point your finger and shout some words, and then something dramatic happens. Somebody else plays pretend with you, and they're stunned, or they go flying backwards like you're a freaking Jedi. It's a blast. It's also kinda cringe. Admit it, spellcasting is often the hardest sell for new players. Lightning bolt! Ah! Lightning bolt! Sleep! Lightning bolt! So we need to make sure that every time someone puts their dignity on the line to say one of our silly incants, we're rewarding them with that immersive feeling. That doesn't mean spells have to be more powerful, it just means that they need to be unique and change your playstyle or change what your opponent is doing. If we cut the spell roster in half and make sure all of them are dramatic and unique, there will be less confusion on the battlefield and every cast will be more fun and easier to understand. Now this means getting rid of immunities, but it also means getting rid of spells that just deal with basic functionality, like extension and swift. If we don't want you to be able to get a spell off, we shouldn't have that spell in the game in the first place. Running out of range of spells isn't fun counterplay, and it looks cringe to have people running back and forth while other people are pointing at them. What are you, my gym teacher? So let's shorten incants and make the default spell range longer, say 35 feet. Alright, so we get rid of counting, we get rid of metamagic, we get rid of immunities, we get rid of spells with no counterplay. I also think we need to get rid of out-of-game states. There's nothing worse than looking around a field full of people and wondering which ones you're allowed to attack. So say goodbye to teleport, shadow step, blink, and all that. So what's left? In the link in the description, I've included my proposed spell list. It totals less than half of Ampgard's current spells, and I haven't put abilities on there from non-casting classes. I'll address that in another video. But my list does have a lot of new spells on it. Each magic user will hit the field with about 10 spells maximum, and the way that you choose your build is going to narrow down which 10 spells you have. There's no need to make a spell list, they can all have all of their spells. They'll prepare their components the same way Archer does, so each caster of a given class will still hit the field with different resource pools and therefore different playstyles. Moreover, your opponents will always know that you're following the rules because they can see your remaining components at all times. Speaking of visual information, trimming the spell list has some other advantages. You know how people are always saying, declare enchantments, and then noobs have no idea what anyone's talking about? Well, in the system that I'm proposing, we could conceivably trim the number of enchantments down to just two per class. Then, we have offensive enchantments always tie the spell strip to your weapon, and defensive enchantments always tie the spell strip to your sash on your shoulder. Of course, your sash will color code to your class, so that way, every combination of strip location and color will be unique. So as soon as you see the spell strip, you know what the spell is. No need to stop the flow of the game and stand there talking about the rules. There's also some new spell effects I want to add. In my counterplay video, I talk about how anything that results in a count should instead give players a debuff and a task to complete to remove that debuff. This can be used to avoid out-of-game states for things like shove and lost. V9's Shove Strike is broken right now because of the difficulty of resolving an out-of-game state that happens so quickly. What if, instead of Shove making your opponent do something, it gave them a debuff until they do something? Let's create a debuff and call it Pacified. You're not allowed to attack or deliver strikes. If you attack by mistake, whatever, it just doesn't count. People don't need to take it. They'll know you're Pacified. So now, our spell that's going to replace Shove will say that the target is pacified until they've moved away from you. Now, the player who gets hit by Shove can choose how they deal with it without holding up the game or being in violation of the rules or ask to go somewhere unsafe. Nothing has to grind to a halt, even for the player who gets hit by the ability. No one gets taken out of the game, even for a second. It also creates layers of counterplay, since the target is made vulnerable while they're trying to end the debuff. The caster can press their advantage and chase the target farther back, kind of like how Fear and Awe work. So to summarize, here's my magic system. Spellcasters get a limited number of spell components, the same way archers get a limited number of specialty arrows. There are four different types of spell components that they can choose from. Spell balls, spell strips, wristbands, and implements which are used for spell balls, buffs, verbals, and 
reusable verbals. Implements will replace weapon proficiency, and you can cast spells on them which let you block or self-buff. This encourages casters to use more flavorful weapons and fight solely with their magic. The total number of spells in the game will be reduced by more than half. No flat immunities, no out-of-game states, no frozen, no math, no spell lists, and no spell points. So there's less running back and forth and more getting to the action. There's less noise pollution and more counterplay. There's less... Nuh -uh. And more fun. And that's putting it mildly. Thanks for watching.